what you guys got another video here for updating the firmware for your monitor now this is a dell alienware monitor that i have here but you really want to follow these sort of steps for any particular type of monitor if you're talking about updating the firmware so on this one it has a little joystick on the bottom here so i'm going to open this up and have a look at the information that is available on this particular model so I'm going to come down to where it says other at the bottom here on this Dell Alienware 34 inch widescreen monitor. This gives me the firmware model number, which is there M0B102 and the service tag right there. So we can take a look exactly what monitor this is. You can see on the bottom right hand corner, it's an AW3423DW. So now we know what the model number is and we know what firmware version we have and what we can do is use this information to do a search on the manufacturer's website and you can see the model number right here and this is important because you need to make sure that there is a firmware available for that particular monitor so let me go over and have a look at their website and we'll see if there's a firmware available for this so i'm going to head over to dell's website and you can see here i did a simple search of my tag my service tag here, and it says Alienware AW3423DW monitor firmware updates. So now I know this is exactly what I need. If you have a look here, it will tell you it fixes and enhances and stability of the actual monitor itself. So it improves input latency and the occasional screen flicker. So we're going to go ahead and flash this. And you can see the versions are right here and the release date, download type application, and it gives you uh, some other information here so let's go ahead and download this it's 114 megabytes in size so once we've downloaded this we will need to extract the files and these are the two files that i have extracted from my zip file you can see there is a manual inside here and this is important because it will give you some installation steps that you're going to need to follow and you might be thinking that this is a bit over the top but you have to be careful this is firmware and if it stops any time in the process of flashing that firmware there is a risk that your monitor might not work properly so you can see here it's telling you to ensure that you're only one monitor connected at any one time and you can also see the monitor must remain powered on and connected through the entire software upgrade process make sure the nvidia driver is compatible and updated to the latest version and you can see within the windows control panel adjust the power options to turn off and put the computer to sleep to never we don't want the computer going to sleep while we're flashing our firmware so let's go ahead and we'll work our way through these and what we're going to do is make sure all of this is done before we go to step one and flash our firmware so let's start with the graphics driver here i'm going to go ahead and do the graphics driver i'm using the uh, geforce experience here if you've got a radian driver or anything like that make sure you're fully updated you can see there was a driver update available for this particular graphics card so i'm going to go ahead and download this and get it installed and updated on the system this is important if they're telling you to do this it's important to do it because if something goes wrong during that process we could end up with an issue we don't want that when we're flashing the actual firmware and this could be said for any firmware that you're flashing it's basically wiping the firmware of that hardware now without the firmware on the hardware it's not going to work correctly so be careful that you keep it powered at all times when you're flashing any sort of firmware for any device so now we've got the graphics drivers fully updated what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the next step and that was to make sure the monitor and computer settings were set to never turn off. You can see turn off display in 10 minutes. We want to put that to never and put the computer to sleep. Never. We want to set those like that. You can reverse these afterwards. We don't want the computer going to sleep and we don't want the monitor turning off in 10 minutes just in case it turns off during the flashing process, which could end up causing a problem for us. So we've done that now we need to make sure that we have any hdr settings or blue light or any other things like that uh, disabled and i have the night light permanently on to protect my eyes from blue light and if you use hdr here if this is on you need to turn this off and the reason for this is because it doesn't want hdr on or night light or any other 
type of um, filtering that you might have on the monitor and that we need to turn these off temporarily so we can do our flash. So that's that part done. And I'm just going to check some other areas, which is also the graphics setting in advanced graphics here. So I need to go to advanced graphics. Let me go back here and go to advanced display and make sure the refresh rate was set to 60 hertz. It doesn't want it on the highest refresh rate uh, for this particular monitor. So it's worth doing this because obviously they don't want to cause any issues. And that is the default refresh rate really for most monitors. So we're going to turn that to 60. And that's now done. So we've got those set. And what we need to do is move on to the next step. And the next step was to deal with any sort of notifications that might happen on your computer. You don't want any pop-ups or notifications happening to your PC while you're flashing the firmware because this will stop the process. I have these turned off constantly anyway. As you can see here, these are all turned off. But if you do have these on, you will need to turn these off. Any other notifications that you might be receiving, maybe it might be a Discord that you've got open that will be sending notifications. You want to turn all those off or shut Discord down. Any sort of antivirus program, I would advise you to disable just in case it starts to notify you to do stuff. This is another cause of a lot of problems. Antivirus programs can cause a lot of issues when you're doing things like this. So I'm going to put this on pause for one hour to make sure that it's not going to cause any issues when we're doing the flashing process. Now with all that done, we're ready to right click on the actual firmware file and run this as administrator. And we want to run this uh, firmware software to make sure it's going to be flashing our system. Now for recording the screen at this stage, you really don't want to be doing anything like that. So uh, you want to make sure that's completely disabled. So I'm going to start this process check for updates first and it will check the monitor to see whether there's any firmware update available. So let me go ahead and check for updates first. I know there is a firmware update available and it does say there is a new version available and which means we can now hit the flash button and it will then tell us to make sure that we've got good power plugged in. We're not going to turn it off and make sure that any of this other stuff uh, is done that we did in that document. Now you may see some flashing on the screen and things like that. It's telling you there not to panic and it will start the process of updating your firmware. Now it has warned us about some uh, loss of signal on the screen. That's pretty normal as you would see here. And once this is done, it's going to go through the process and you might see the updating G-Sync monitor firmware here on a Dell, but yours might be slightly different, but basically it's going to be the same process of updating your firmware. Once this is all complete, you should have a fully updated firmware like you can see here. G-Sync Monitor Firmware Update Complete, and it's been successful. So no restart is needed, and all you need to do now is go back and start to put back your settings once the uh, update is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my display settings and reverse the actual uh, refresh rate and put that back to its maximum here so it's on 60 so I'm going to go back and put it on to 175 and we're going to keep this set in here and then once we've done this I'm going to put my uh, night light back on because I have that on permanently and uh, once you get used to that night light it's amazing how your eyes adjusts to that particular orange uh, tinge that you have on the monitor so I'm going to go ahead and put this back to 10 minutes because obviously this is an OLED panel and you don't want to have any sort of uh, screen burn. And uh, yes, screen burn is a real thing on OLED monitors. And I'm going to go back in here and just reverse this and put this back to display and nightlight put this back on. Now I don't use the HDR on this monitor, but some people may do and you can turn it back on if you wish. I'm going to leave that as is and that's pretty much it. And that's how you can flash the firmware on your monitor. This was a Dell Alienware monitor, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same for any other particular monitor that you have. You just have to follow those simple steps. And maybe some of the other manufacturers will have a useful manual there to tell you what to do in your flashing of your firmware on your monitor. Pretty much, I would say, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. And it's just a safety precaution to make sure you don't interrupt 
that flashing process on any device that you do. That's good practice. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on a Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.